Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi guys, it's me, Katie Lee CGC, and welcome back to my channel for another Wannabe Wednesday. For the month of March, I decided I'm going to continue to record topics related to interviews because they've been really popular videos. So continue to let me know down below what you would like to hear about and I will keep on making videos that will hopefully help you be successful in your interviews. Today what I wanted to record is a video that was requested a couple of times, a video about giving bad news to patients. I guess a lot of you are worried about the question of how would you deliver bad news coming up. Even though giving bad news always gets my heart racing a little bit and I always feel so deeply for those patients who are getting the bad news. It is just not that challenging of a skill. So what I want to talk about first is my genetic counselor motto. Now I learned this motto in grad school specifically from a physician who worked in palliative care who came to speak to our class and it is so simple. I tell every single student I mentor or supervise about it because I think it's a great motto. So the motto is to be present and to be informed. It's that simple and that's really all you need to deliver bad news. You need to be present. What do I mean? Well, you need to be fully focused on this patient and their family or whoever's going to be attending the consult. If you are giving bad news remotely, which is happening more and more right now due to COVID, you need to close all those extra browsers, close your personal computer, turn off your cell phone or put it away, and just focus on that patient with no distractions, no emails popping up, no chats from colleagues popping up, be fully present. And if you're distracted in the back of your mind about something on the personal front or a different work-related topic, you need to close that chapter before you deliver this news. Part two, be informed. Also incredibly obvious. You should know everything there is to know about this patient. You need to prepare and think about if you've met that patient before for like a pre-test consult or for maybe when they were getting the testing ordered that you're delivering the results on. You need to think about what you remember from that appointment and just be fully informed because it is incredibly discouraging, I know as a patient, when you've told your provider a bunch of things about you and your medical history and they don't remember it or they don't care to look it up and refresh themselves, especially if they're going to be providing you bad news. So be present, be informed. That's my genetic counseling motto. I hope it resonates with some of you. Let's talk about a specific scenario. If any of you who commented and requested this video have a scenario you're worried about, let me know down below and I'm happy to make a video. But I think the one that most of you were getting at was a prenatal patient had screening, um, maybe in her first trimester, the end of her first trimester, beginning of her second trimester, and that screening showed that she had an increased risk to have for her pregnancy to be affected with Down syndrome, or trisomy 21. So the patient followed up with amniocentesis at 15 weeks of pregnancy, and you have just received those amniocentesis results in your hand, amniocentesis is a diagnostic test with a greater than 99.5% accuracy. So that is the gold standard compared to the screening test, which was just a test that raises alerts that there could be an issue going on with this pregnancy. There could be a difference. You have these amnio results in your hand or on the EMR that show that yes, the pregnancy or the fetus is indeed affected with Down syndrome or trisomy 21. Perhaps you are at an interview, an interviewer describes that situation and says, how would you deliver this bad news? Because it's COVID times, the interviewer tells you that you will be delivering this news on the phone because patients at your clinic actually don't come in unless there's a procedure or a scan or something scheduled for that day. So you need to deliver these results on the phone. So how would you deliver these results on the phone? What would be your next steps? The first thing I'm always thinking about when I'm getting ready to deliver bad news is that I might interpret news or a result differently than my patient. A result sitting in front of me could be the worst thing I could imagine in my life. And to another person, it could have been what they're expecting. It may not feel like the worst news ever. Everyone's going to have a different worldview that impacts how they think about this news. Uh, but it's pretty likely that news like this is going to be surprising. Maybe catch them off guard. Do so you want to reflect back to your pretest consult or the other last time you talked to that patient and think about what it was like and kind of what they were anticipating? If, if you did have a pretest consult. Okay, now let's really dive into an answer to answer this interview question well. So I would explain my motto, I wanna be present and be informed. 
I want to review everything that I know about this specific patient and her prenatal history, her previous pregnancy history, go over my pretest consult notes. I want to go over the amniocentesis results report and make sure everything checks out and it is indeed a Down syndrome finding and just have everything in front of me and ready to go before I pick up the phone to call her. Before I dial her number, I'm gonna make sure I'm fully focused, have my office door closed, I've got um, just the information I need up and everything in my office silenced. Then when I get her on the phone, I'm going to say, hi, this is Katie, I'm the genetic counselor from Denver Prenatal Clinic and I'm calling with your test results. I was wondering if now is an okay time to talk for the next 20 to 30 minutes or so. And you give her a moment. You want to make sure that your patient is in a place, both mentally and physically, where she's able to talk. Because you know, as genetic counselors, we're calling in the middle of the workday most of the time. And a lot of these patients are at work. I mean, now that it's COVID, I find a lot of them are actually at home and it's a lot easier to catch them in a good time and place. But maybe they're running an errand or they're with an older child. So give them the opportunity to opt out always. It's kind of my gut instinct when someone says that is to be like, oh yes, yeah, yeah, now it's fine. Even if it's not really a good time. So sometimes I'll even double check if they're really quick to answer. I'll be like, I think this might be a longer conversation. I just wanna make sure it's a good time. Um, here's some other times I'm available to talk today. Otherwise, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to talk right now. Okay. And then I like to deliver a warning shot. A warning shot is um, just a kind of a warning, a very simple warning that bad news is coming or unexpected news is coming. A warning shot for this type of conversation might be something like, I have news that you probably weren't expecting and I want to make sure we have time on the phone to go over all of your questions and concerns. So something like that would be considered a warning shot. Sometimes you might say I have bad news, but again, I don't want my perception of the news to color their opinions. So after you give that warning shot, you might say, and this is one of the benefits I see in telehealth, you can always invite a support person right onto that phone call. You can always just join another person onto the call. So I might say at that moment, would you like me to get into the results right away? Or would you like me to dial in your partner or a family member? I know at the last appointment, your mom was there with you and I'd be happy to call someone in if you'd like someone else to uh, listen in on the call too. Give them a chance to answer. If they take you up on it, great, add them in. If they don't, no problem. You can always offer it again later, depending on how the phone call goes. Once you've said that, it's time to get to the news and you want to be very clear about exactly what it is you're saying. No beating around the bush, just exactly what you're calling to say. I have the results of your amniocentesis. As you know, we were looking to see if there was a chromosome diagnosis or a chromosome difference in your pregnancy in your baby and the results do confirm that your baby is affected with Down syndrome or trisomy 21 which is the syndrome we talked about a little bit at your pretest consult. So I would say it as clear as possible, whatever that news is, and then give the patient a moment. This could have been what they were anticipating. This could be, you know, the worst news they've ever received and received on the phone in their whole life, depending on what their worldview is and what they've been thinking about in the time since they first had their screening results showing an increased risk for Down syndrome. So a patient, some patients will break down and start crying right away. Other patients will be very matter of fact and very almost professional on the phone. Like they just wanna get the facts and then process it on their own. And you don't really know what you're going to get oftentimes. So if they're crying on the phone, I just give it a minute. I give it a couple of minutes even. And I say, I'm so sorry this wasn't the news that you were anticipating. I'm here for you. I wanna stay on the line and again, if there's anyone I can call and add to the phone call, I'd be really happy to, please just let me know. And, and just take time with them while they cry and gather themselves. Um, you know, I do usually say, I'm sorry, I know this isn't what you were hoping for, those types of things, if they're really upset. And I just give them the time, as much time as they need. And then when it starts to get quiet, um, you can kind of tell that they're, they're collecting themselves and they're ready to listen. I usually remind them, I want to make sure that during this appointment, you get as much or as little information as you need about next steps, about what this diagnosis means for your family and for this baby, about all of your options. But I also, I don't want to overwhelm you. I want to let you know right up front that if you wanna stop this conversation at any time to take a break, we can pick up on it later. 
All of this information is always going to be here for you to learn more. We don't need to cover it all today, but I do want to answer any of your big questions right away today. And then always leave the opportunity that we can talk again. We can schedule a follow-up appointment to get more information. When I'm thinking about performing a consult to deliver trisomy 21 or Down syndrome results, there's a few things on my checklist, but my checklist does not come first. The patient's checklist should come first. On my mental checklist, I'm thinking about make sure the patient knows what test was reported in the accuracy, make sure the patient knows the results that the pregnancy is affected with Down syndrome or trisomy 21, make sure they have an overview of what trisomy 21 is and what it entails and go into those specific uh, clinical features in as much or as little detail as they want, um, all the way from the things that can appear prenatally in the fetus to things that can happen in adulthood for people affected with Down syndrome. I want them to know their options for this current pregnancy, of course, continuing the pregnancy and kind of additional considerations like perhaps meeting with specialists related to, for example, cardiology, because kiddos with Down syndrome have an increased risk for congenital heart defects. Um, continuing the pregnancy and maybe thinking about delivering at a different hospital that's most well suited to take care of any needs that that child might have after they're born, continuing that pregnancy, connecting with families who have children with Down syndrome or families who've made a decision about what to do with pregnancies affected with Down syndrome, um, continuing the pregnancy and putting the child up for adoption is another option, terminating the pregnancy is an option. So that's kind of what's on my checklist of things I wanna cover with the patient, but it's probably not all gonna happen today probably not all gonna happen in that first phone call. So I'd go back to the patient and say, what are your biggest questions? What do you wanna talk about the most right now? And I'd start making my way through that list. I like to use just a large post-it note or like a small pad of paper and take notes because this patient is probably going to be flustered. And I just wanna kind of make sure I'm checking off every single thing that she is concerned about and making my way through the list. So I would do that. And I would also let the patient know up front or as you're going through this information, I just wanna let you know I'm going to send you a summary email of all of the information that we've talked about so you do not need to memorize any of this. And I am going to be available over email and over phone if you or your partner have follow-up questions to anything that we talked about. You can also tell them, I'm also going to send you some resources, depending on um, what the questions they're asking and what their needs are. You can let them know, I've got a resource for this, and it's this type of website that covers this type of information. Would you like that? And you can send them some specific websites. So that's another good option. Usually when I'm getting off of the phone after delivering difficult news, I check in with the patient. So it'll be kind of the last thing I'm doing. Let them know that you will continue to be available for follow-up questions and then just check in. Have you thought about who you're going to share this news with first and what you're going to do to start processing this news and kind of deciding on your next steps? Something like that may or may not feel appropriate depending on how the conversation goes, but usually that's where I go just to show that I, I do really care. And oftentimes when you get disappointing news, at least for me, the first thing I wanna do is tell my best friend and that just helps. So I usually to say something like that and you know, if they say, oh, my partner or, oh, I'm gonna call my best friend and say, okay, good, well, I'm, I'm glad they're there for you. And if they bring, if talking to your best friend brings up any questions or talking to your partner brings up any questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out. And I'd end the call. So I think that's it. That's delivering bad news over the phone in a nutshell. Um, I hope that was useful. If you're worried about other aspects of delivering bad news that I didn't touch on, it's honestly, it's so normal to me, even though, like I said, it does get my heart racing sometimes. It's so normal to me to have to give bad news that um, it, it doesn't feel challenging anymore. I know exactly what I need to do. And if you become a genetic counselor, you will get to that place as well. So again, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let me know what else you'd like to hear about down below in the comment section. Bye guys.